Hi guys and welcome to your weekly horoscope for Monday the 30th of August going through until Sunday the 5th of September 2021. Thanks for joining me, it's a pleasure to be with you today. I'm going to give you a rundown of what the planets are doing this week, what relationships they form with one another and what energy that brings up. So these weekly horoscopes, they're for all signs of the zodiac, they're for everyone who watches. What I do is I kind of take the, the um, astrological temperature to see what the vibe is like and I look at this core energy and what it's about because it will translate differently for different people but looking at the core thing to see what the main themes are you know like love or work or moving or travel or whatever it's going to be really helpful in navigating the week or hopefully that's the idea behind these weekly horoscopes okay so starting with Monday the 30th of August we've got Mercury going into Libra. Now, Mercury is the communication planet, and in Libra, it's very even keeled. Libra is the scales, and it's about um, beauty and creativity. It's ruled by Venus, the planet of love and beauty and creativity. It's also the only sign of the zodiac that isn't a living thing. It's about balance, and it's about looking at both sides of the coin, being considerate of other people and the community. So with Mercury in Libra, you're looking at the bigger picture. You're thinking about your role in things, but also how that's going to impact other people. So with that said, it's, um, it's a really good indicator that you're not going to have a huge amount of conflict this week because Mercury in Libra really likes to keep the peace and it's interested in harmony. We've also got the moon in Gemini, so another air sign. And the moon is what feels comfortable. And with the moon being in Gemini, what does feel comfortable is expressing your own opinion and getting creative and taking things that you've thought about and deciding this is my take on all of this and I'm going to express that opinion. It squares the sun in Virgo, so there's friction between do I speak up or do I censor myself? Do I have all the information? Have I done my research or haven't I? Because with all this mercury energy floating around, you're going to be very reluctant to speak up if you don't know what you're talking about, if you haven't done the reading. So with that said, it's kind of interesting because if you find yourself being super, super certain about something this week, then you can kind of assume correctly that you have done your research, that you have looked at the information because we've got Mars in Virgo, we've got the Sun in Virgo, and they wouldn't let you express yourself or speak up or make plans or make changes if they didn't feel like they'd been satisfied with the right amount of information coming in. So you can be pretty certain of yourself and pretty certain that you are saying the right thing, especially if there's some sort of passion behind it. The Gemini moon also trines Saturn in Aquarius. So you have a respect for the general consensus, the kind of greater wisdom of other people. So you're really able to access anything that you need. You're able to pick and choose what's useful to you and you're able to dismiss what isn't so useful. So you really see your role in things and you see how you fit in as far as the bigger picture is concerned and how you can influence or adapt and change a situation through your words, through your actions. The Gemini Moon also trines Venus in Libra, so you're very creative and very expressive. And it sextiles Chiron and Aries. So doing something for yourself where you're really able to share your views and opinions, that's going to feel really empowering. And it's going to be like, wow, I'm doing something for myself. This is good. I can feel good about this. So on Monday, you'll want to keep the peace and you'll want to see the bigger picture. And you're not overly obsessed with getting your way. You're really looking at achieving something for the greater good. Um, you're fair. You're articulate and you're detail oriented. So because of that, it's a great time to get organized and to make plans for the future and or to be creative and to express yourself in some sort of tangible way through art or music or design or gardening. So, you know, it doesn't have to be the creation of some new masterpiece. It can be something that's almost meditative for you, like gardening or um, chanting or doing yoga or something like that, where you're able to Take some time out for yourself and it kind of proves to you that, you know what, I am important. I'm taking this time for myself to take care of me. Um, that's going to really set the right tone for the week. So make sure that you make yourself a priority on Monday. 
On Tuesday, the 31st of August, we've got the Moon in Gemini forming a square with Mars in Virgo and Neptune in Pisces. So that's interesting because it makes you um, somewhat critical. The Gemini Moon continues to encourage you to speak up and to express your truth. Mars in Virgo is really quite a hard taskmaster. M Mars in Virgo says, have you got all the information right? Have you, do you know what you're talking about? You don't want to show yourself up. It's really essential that you get every detail right. The thing I'm seeing is like a, um, like a, a blueprint of some sort of design for a building, like an architecture or engineering. You know, everything has to be exactly on point. Otherwise, the whole thing is going to fall apart. So Mars in Virgo encourages you to be precise and to be accurate on Tuesday. And then Neptune in Pisces really makes that quite difficult because Neptune in Pisces is not quantifiable. It's dreams and emotions and feelings. So how do you make an Excel spreadsheet or get organized about that? So try and be nice to yourself on Tuesday. Don't take on too much um, and don't go after yourself if you can't feel, if you do not feel like you're managing every single emotion that you've got. The Gemini moon trines Venus in Libra. So any creative types, anyone expressing themselves, anyone um, creating new content, the first two days of the week here are fabulous for that kind of work. Jupiter is in Aquarius that also trines the Gemini moon. So working with information is going to broaden your perspective and one idea will lead to another idea and there's going to be a whole world opening up to you in terms of your perspective and your ideas and what you want to express. So really give yourself time to brainstorm a little bit and to think along new lines. And the Gemini moon also quincuxes Pluto and Capricorn. Because these ideas can have really important and significant real world effects. So if you implement some of these ideas, they can change your life. The sun in Virgo quincuxes Saturn in Aquarius. <clears throat> so you really have a good understanding of where you're at and what you're doing. You're not deluded. Your ambition doesn't exceed your talent. You're really, you've got a very good idea of who you are, where you're at, what you can do, and how you can slot into different areas in life to get what it is you want. So if you have any practical ideas that you really want to go after, allow yourself to do that because it's likely to be pretty significant and to have a strong influence on your life. In terms of personal relationships on Tuesday the 31st, there's um, great potential for misunderstanding, especially if you're not quite sure about someone's tone. You can't quite suss out if they're joking or if they're being sarcastic or something. That can really be difficult to navigate on Tuesday. If you're not clear, rather than just agreeing and saying, uh, yeah, 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 make sure you clarify what's going on. Because assuming anything on Tuesday can really lead to miscommunication and errors further down the road. So by nipping that in the bud and getting clear in the moment, you'll really avoid those kind of problems. It's a great day for a social gather gathering, like a wedding or a party of some type. There's this really fabulous celebratory spirit in the atmosphere. There's, it's party mode. It's really a positive kind of energy on Tuesday and spending it with other people will seem really fun and enjoyable. Communication isn't that ideal because there's room for misunderstanding, but the, the energy of, hey, we're spending time together and we're enjoying ourselves here on Tuesday, that's really supported and that will be a lot of fun. So that's a really nice way to end August. Moving on to Wednesday, the 1st of September, we've got the moon going into Cancer at 7.26 in the morning. So the moon in Cancer is much more interested in using its energy to take care of other people and to be of service. The Cancer moon squares Mercury in Libra. So really it's like, how can I make things nice for other people? So other people and their feelings, they start to appear on your grid and become a priority for the first time this week, really. <laughs> and the Cancer Moon also squares Chiron and Aries. So it's kind of an obligation and a duty. I exist, therefore I have to help other people. I am breathing, therefore I have to cook your meals. <laughs> so just take it easy with um, that sense of duty on 
Wednesday the 1st of September because yes it's nice to help other people and to support them but really you're not here to live someone else's life completely for them and to do everything for them you're not the Cancer Moon Queen Cux is Saturn in Aquarius and it exiles the Sun in Virgo so talking to other people about this and doing research and how you know especially if you have um, problems with balance in your relationships like if you're if you've been accused of being codependent or on the other extreme, if you've been accused of having no feelings or being really cold and difficult, then by talking to other people about your relationships and how to um, change the way you come across, you know, if the, if the perception of the way you are doesn't match what you're actually feeling, then how do I change that perception or how do I alter the way I behave to create more balance in my relationship? You'll be able to find a lot of useful info to read or people who've been there, like, I don't know, CODA meetings. People who are in the know will appear in your life and will give you answers. So it's a great example of when the student is ready, the teacher appears. On Wednesday overall, you're now more focused on other people and you're less interested in expressing yourself. But what I get overall is that you have a great, um, <laughs> you could really do with a day off. You could really benefit from just having some quiet and some peace and saying, do you know what, I'm gonna take some time to recharge my batteries here. It's been a lot. I'm just gonna have a good self-care day. So it is a nice time to look after yourself and to plan ahead and also to get your bearings again if you feel like you've got a little bit lost. You know, if you feel like life has gone off the rails a little bit, then Wednesday is really a nice day to quietly and gently pick up the pieces and to try again. And to have a really comfortable word with yourself and to say, do you know what? Things have gone belly up in life, but thank you for continuing to try. Thank you for taking such good care of me. Thank you for always getting up again, dusting yourself off and trying again. Because that's really what you have access to. You know, if things are perfect, great. But if things aren't perfect, the lovely thing about Wednesday is that you really have compassion for yourself and you have a respect for your journey and what you've been through in life and how much you try. So you're grounded and you're compassionate and you're really able to take control of your life and you're able to take the reins and to steer off in a new direction. So it's a really great day to forgive yourself, to start over, to just go, oh, I'm okay, you know, I'm okay. <sighs> Thursday, the 2nd of September, we've got Mars in Virgo, now opposing Neptune in Pisces. That's kind of interesting because um, Mars in Virgo is very critical of reality and Neptune in Pisces is fantasy, it's what could be. So anything that's really abstract and th that makes you feel like this is totally useless and why am I listening to this? You're really just going to say, talk to the hand. I, I don't have time for this. I'm trying to get the blueprints together. You know, it's that kind of vibe. So your patience isn't huge. You're really focused on facts and meaning and anything that kind of blows in with fanciful, uh, useless information that seems kind of dreamy you're not going to have a lot of tolerance for that the moon is in cancer and that opposes pluto and capricorn and that may make you feel a little bit torn so do i take care of people or do i handle my life and my circumstances do i give someone a leg up or do i give myself a leg up here it squares venus and libra so now the creative impulse i think is going to be expressed or is you will want to express that impulse in your family, um, with the people nearest and dearest to you, with the people you love, romantic partners, and you'll really want to do something that makes their life better. Like, um, yeah, supporting them at an event or filling out a form for them or um, going with someone as a support. It's You really want to use your energy to redesign life for other people and to make it more enjoyable. Okay, so that's fine. But again, if you're taking it too far and you feel like this is my duty, I have to make life nice for this person, then you're taking it a little, it's 
a little OTT and it's important to kind of get a good handle on that. Um, yeah, so where was I? Um, okay. Oh dear. I just need to, I need to get my bearings now. Yes, okay. So Mars and Neptune got that. Then the Cancer moon and the opposition with Pluto, Venus and Chiron, spoken about that. Sextiles, Uranus and Taurus and Mars and Virgo and trines Neptune and Pisces. Okay, so there's a lot going on. And even though you're focused on all the details, there may be so much going on that is outside of your control or that doesn't mesh with what you've tried to plan ahead for. You may feel a little bit out of control on Thursday and a little overwhelmed. So expect things on Thursday to go, um, to not exactly go the way they've been planned and try and manage your emotions around that. If something doesn't go the way you want it, make sure you don't get overly angry about it and just get back to the drawing board and try again. Don't waste your time with a lot of um, negative emotions that don't actually help you progress. You may get a bill on Thursday or some sort of um, news that requires you to do something in return. So a letter where you have to fill out a form and post it back or a bill you have to pay. There may also be pressure to do everything perfectly and to get everything resolved right away in the very moment. So the bill's here, sign it, fill out the form five minutes later, go back to the post office and post it and be done with it. It's very obsessive in terms of I need to get everything off my plate immediately. So knowing that, be patient on Thursday. And if you have the luxury about thinking, if you have the luxury to kind of mull something over or to think about it before you act, then take that opportunity and take that time because the longer you leave something on Thursday, the more clarity you have and the less room for error there is. It's a complicated day Thursday. It's very impulsive and very different to the rest of the week because you're not looking at all the details and you're jumping onto things before having done all your research. So just be careful with that. On Friday, the 3rd of September, we've got the moon in Cancer now opposing Pluto in Capricorn. So that's interesting because um, you're really focused on, it's almost like you're in denial now. You're blocking out the negative stuff. You know it's there, but you don't want to look at it. You want to look at the positives in your life. The main focus will be relationships and I want to spend time with my boyfriend or my family or my siblings. And it's very much about sticking your head in the sand and living in this positive bubble, even though there are negative things that you may have to deal with and just saying, I can't right now. So it's the difference between ignoring something and procrastinating and saying, oh, I can't even face the truth of my life. I'm just going to hide. So that's a problematic. The moon enters Leo at 6.58 in the evening. So as the day goes on, you become more and more confident. The Leo moon opposes Saturn in Aquarius. So confident to the extent where I'm right, you're unlikely to be right because I feel really right. Okay. And it textiles Mercury in Libra. So the creative ability is back. Venus in Libra, then Queen Cux is Neptune in Pisces. So your imagination is really endless. You can think of things that are just miraculous and completely unique. And the Sun in Virgo, Queen Cux is Chiron in Aries. So working with your own ideas and your creativity and allowing yourself to put pen to paper or paintbrush to canvas, it's really important because you're so fired up and you're having ideas that seem to come out of the blue and that are really life changing. So on a practical level, when it comes to your relationships, an old argument, an old argument or some sort of unresolved issue, it may, may come up in a relationship again. So you may have put it to bed a year ago and you haven't discussed it. And now somehow it comes up again and there's still no resolution. So, if someone has a different narrative to you, or if someone remembers certain events in a way that don't seem right to you, then that will feel quite difficult and challenging if you get the sense that the truth has been twisted somehow or that you've been misrepresented. That's not going to go down very well. 
So it'll annoy you and it'll be difficult and you'll want to um, amend the story to make it match your truth and reality. But weirdly on Friday, you also have compassion for someone else, maybe not remembering every detail or, or um, their recollection differs or something. So you have compassion for that. And because you have compassion and empathy, it's like I've, I've remembered things wrongly in the past. You know, I have a different recollection than other people. So I forgive you and I don't want to discuss it and I just want to avoid it. So because you, you can see the other person's point of view, you're more interested in keeping the peace and the harmony than actually correcting the story that's being told. <clears throat> so you really have a choice there, the discomfort of correcting someone or the ability to just sweep things under the rug to keep things light and breezy and fun, but for this untruth to exist out there. And with the energy being what it is, even though you may want to avoid conflict on Friday, I think it's really important to correct something if it's not correct, because any kind of narrative or, or um, storyline that has a life on Friday, the 3rd of September, it's going to grow into something bigger. So you may as well correct it sooner rather than later so that it doesn't grow out of control. Okay, so it's important to really stand up for yourself and to say, well, actually, this is the truth, rather than to say, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, whatever, let's just forget about it again and pass me, you know, the hors d'oeuvres or whatever. <laughs> so focus on reality and make sure it's on point. Saturday, the 4th of September, we've got the moon in Leo. And it forms a sextile with Mercury in Libra. So you feel confident, you feel creative, and you want to have fun with your creative expression. You want to have an adventure. You want to do something that's thrilling and that's exciting. It opposes Saturn in Aquarius. So this is a day that's about you. And you're now, again, focused on the self and other people's feelings and views aren't that important. The Leo moon trines Chiron in Aries and it squares Uranus and Taurus. So doing something that feels original and chaotic and, and new is going to be really important to you. So it's, a, it's, it's not the kind of day where you close the curtains and you just say, not today, I'm staying in bed. It's, <laughs> it's important that you make a plan, that you do something that you enjoy, something that's fun and that you actually go for it, that, yeah, that's really going to work in your favor. Mercury in Libra trines Saturn in Aquarius. So again, there's great room to be inspired through the collective wisdom that other people have gathered over the years via books and the internet and art. You're really like a sponge and you can really get new ideas by looking at things which have already been created by other people. The Virgo Sun quick quincuxes Chiron in Aries. So you, you're still focused on detail and you'll really still want to make sense of things. So working at something is important because you really can make a lot of headway. With that said, make sure you allow for an adventure or something that really makes you feel alive, something that is fun. Because you feel confident, you feel connected, you feel like you're in control of your life and your circumstances and you've got your hands firmly on the wheel, okay? So it's important to exercise that strength, to say, okay, I wanna to go to the beach and get a bit of a tan, and then I wanna get an ice cream, and then in the afternoon I wanna go home and organize the um, Word document or whatever it is. But make sure that you allow yourself to feel rewarded and to feel like, yeah, I'm doing something nice for myself here. Following your instincts may lead to the beginning of a new relationship or a new idea or discovery. So it may seem frivolous to go to the beach and to, or just to go for a walk just because you want some fresh air or the weather's nice, but it's not frivolous. It leads to some new beginning. So make sure you do that for yourself. Connect with people, nature, uh, the written word or meditate for inspiration, for new ideas, for new beginnings. They come in really, in a really, abstract, nice and easy way on Saturday. It's a day of inspiration. In fact, it's a week for inspiration. You're going to have lots of ideas and there's a lot going on and it's really a fabulous time to be up here. <laughs> yeah.
Sunday the 5th of September, we've got the Leo moon opposing Jupiter in Aquarius. Okay, so you're still um, connected with that sense of confidence and pride in what you're doing. And working with information is going to expand that. It's going to inspire you. The more you speak, the more you hear. The more that process goes round and round and round. And the more ideas come into your mind. Um, so continue to be creative on Sunday the 5th. The Leo moon also quincuxes Neptune in Pisces and Pluto in Capricorn. And it's textiles Venus in Libra. So now the creativity is at a point where you can really create something that you've never been able to create at a standard that's much higher than your usual output because you are so supported creatively. Venus in Libra squares Pluto and Capricorn. So you can really have a breakthrough in terms of your output on Sunday. So it's important that you work at that. And again, you carve out some time for yourself. What's interesting about um, Sunday with the Jupiter and Leo connection, it really um, inflates Leo to the point where it's excessive. And you may have this desperate need to feel alive and to make a memory that you'll have forever. It's kind of like the feeling of a midlife crisis. It's like, oh, you know, the best days are behind me. I've got to squeeze every inch of pleasure out of this moment if I want to. This is my last chance to feel alive. You know, it's a little weird like that it's excessive and it's based on um, an insecurity and a fear of missing out so allow yourself to have great experiences but also give yourself some time to be productive and to create something fabulous and um, there is an insecurity about missing out on the best bits of life so it is important that you have some time for yourself and to explore because if you're just working from 8 in the morning till 10 in the evening on Sunday, you'll, you'll find that difficult to take. It's like, all I do is work. and ooh. So um, plan that. It's important not to take drastic actions based on fear or vanity. It's going to backfire and cause you problems. So, you know, if you feel gorgeous, um, but you're worried about your age and you have to act out because your beauty is fading, Anything along those lines isn't going to work in your favor. It's just all of those thoughts are negative and they come from a place of, oh, I'm losing out. Time is running out. Things are against me. So if you find yourself reacting like that, then just pull back and focus on the creative stuff. That's going to serve you much more. So that's what I get for the week. I hope you have a wonderful time. If you would like a personal reading with me, then please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, click on, so you go to gregoryscott.com, scroll down a little bit, and on the front page, it says book your reading. Click on that button to order your reading with me. In my personal readings, I draw up your birth chart by the astrology. So I take your place of birth, date of birth, and time of birth. And that allows me to draw up your, your birth chart, which is a snapshot of the sky at the moment you were born. And that tells me a great deal about you. It shows me your life purpose, your vocational talents, what's destined for you in personal development and money and travel and education, family, love, um, career, friendships, hopes and dreams. I also use the progress charts and the transits to see what's coming up in future and to see how you've changed over time. And the astro cartography and solar return charts, I look at what places in the world have a particular energy for you and how they're gonna influence you. And the solar return chart, around your birthday, it's really nice to do a solar return chart and to see what's coming up for you in the next year of your life. So if you want to see what's coming up or if you've got some big decisions to make, then please do get in touch with me for a personal reading. Just go to gregoryscott.com, click on book your reading um, to order it. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and um, like, subscribe, and share the video online so that other people can see these as well. That'd be awesome if you're free to share videos on astrology, if you like them. So that'd be really nice. I hope you have a wonderful week. Join me for the daily tarot um, reading videos and the special videos I do on the full moon and the new moons. Check out some of those. Have a great week, and I'll speak to you next week.